in sonship we find discipline and in discipline we find subjection because we are sons we will be disciplined and since we are disciplined we must be in subjection remember whatever God arranges in our environment is for the purpose of instructing and directing us in the straight path we must obey God we must obey these two things he gives first his commandment and second his chastening or discipline on the one hand we obey God's word obey his command and obey all the precepts given us in the Bible on the other hand we subject ourselves to all God's arrangements in our environment for since he has so ordered that such a thing should happen to you you ought to be benefited by it and learn the lesson God wants us to be benefited and to walk in the straight path it also says in Hebrews wherefore lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for yourselves that's reflecting an act of subjection to God's chastisement and discipline God wants you to be benefited and to walk in the straight path we must therefore learn not only to obey the Lord's command but also to obey the Lord's discipline although it costs us to obey the Lord's discipline it nonetheless enables us to walk straight forward before God it's important to point out all the discipline of God is educational it's to teach us something it is given for our profit the pain is meant to measure and to produce in us that which God desires and what is the profit it is that we may be partakers of his holiness I don't know what your purpose is we hear a lot about purpose but right here in the Word of God it says God chastens us that we may be partakers of his holiness or of divine holiness and there is a scripture that says without holiness no one shall see the Lord because holiness is God's very nature we may say that holiness is God's character it is for this reason that God uses all kinds of ways to chasten his children from the very start of our Christian life God chastens us with persistency and with one purpose in mind he wants to make us partakers of his holy character of his divine nature so righteousness when we come to Christ is to position us that means our right standing and then holiness is something that we have to be disciplined and corrected and chastened into so that we can become partakers of his divine nature God has a that's God's purpose and destiny for us to become the partakers of his divine nature I really believe that some people who come to Jesus and they receive his righteousness will end up in the kingdom of heaven but I also believe there may be a group of people who have God has chastened unto holiness and that they in some very special way will be allowed to see God in the light of his holiness because he has made them holy for holiness is not something given but something fashioned which God gradually works into us or slowly incorporates in us through his discipline by his scourge he daily works his holiness into us and the aim of all these chastenings and works is to make us partakers of his holiness and after each scourging we learn and partake a little bit more of his holiness 
Under his discipline, is transformed. And let me tell you, there is nothing greater than this work. And that's a quote from Martha Lee. Paul says, I do not count myself yet to have apprehended. He said, but I press forward towards the mark, towards the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I want to be able to fulfill and complete that for which God has called and chosen and apprehended me for. That had to be a lot more than just his initial salvation. It didn't just stop with Paul being knocked off his horse by a blinding light. He went on to run the race. He said, I want to be perfected. And he was taught if that perfection means holiness. And I think that reflects a certain company. He calls it the prize. I would say being able to see God in his holiness because I am holy. I can't think of a prize any greater than that. So each stroke of discipline has its value. We may derive fruit from every instance of discipline. Because of this, it is of utmost importance that we accept the ordering of God. And His ordering is seen in the discipline of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, let us not try, though we do, to escape that which God has ordained for us. For in escaping, we will miss the ordering of the Lord. And thus, missing an opportunity to be expanded. In other words, we're going to limit the capacity of ourselves as a vessel meet for the Master's use. The time for maturity will be prolonged and the lesson will have to be relearned in order for us to be matured. So we must accept the discipline of the Holy Spirit. Let him enlarge your capacity. A believer will not be the same after he has suffered. If he is not expanded, he will become hardened. For this reason, when we undergo suffering, we should remember that maturity is the sum total of the disciplines of the Holy Spirit.